All right, question number 20. Here's a speed time graph showing the speed in meters per second of an object t seconds after it started to move. We've got the graph there. It says use three strips of equal width to find an estimate for the area under the graph between t1 and t4. So let's look for these elusive t1. So time is here. So t1 is there and T4, which is here. And it also says to us three strips of equal width. As you can see, this area that I've kind of cornered here, I can split it up into three equal parts if I do something like this, like that. And obviously to be able to work out an area, we need to have like a distinguishable shape. So I'm going to turn these shapes into our favorite thing in the whole wide world, actually, which is trapezium. So I'm going to calculate the areas of these three trapeziums. I'm going to work them out, um, add them together, and that's going to give me an estimate for the area under the graph between these T1 and T4. Um, so let's remember the formula for the area of a trapezium. I'm going to give you like a second while I go on to seeing that to yourselves. So the area of the trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides times the distance between them. Here, also known as A plus B over T times H, or any other rearrangement of that that you might want. So, uh, let's look at the first trapezium. If I move this around, this looks like a 3.2. Two, four, six. That looks like a 3.6. So 3.6. Add the other parallel sides. This point looks like a 6.4 maybe. Divided by 2. And then times the distance between them, which is 1. So I'm not really going to bother with that. Because the distance between 1 and 2 is 1 unit. So I'm not really going to bother about that. Um, so I'm getting that's 10 over 2. I think that's a 5, actually. I don't trust myself. So 3.6 plus 6.4, 10. Yes, I still got it. And then divided by 2, that's 5. Uh, let's do the second trapezium. So we've already got the first number. So that would be a 6.4 plus this number here. Obviously, in your question, you to check what your graph goes up into. Uh, this looks like an 8.4 divided by 2. Again, the height is 1, so I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to do 6.4 plus 8.4 and divide that by 2. And I'm getting that's a 7.4, obviously. And the last one, we've already got the first measurement. That's an 8.4. And if I carry on from here, that looks a lot like an a 9.6, I want to call it, 9.6. Half that times by 1, doesn't really matter. So 8.4, I'm really getting like 9 vibes from this. But let's just double check with our calculators, 9.6, because we wouldn't want to risk it. Yeah, definitely a 9. Okay, cool. So 5 plus 7.4 plus 9. Uh, I'm getting 21.4 vibes, but again, I'm doing that in my calculator. So 7.4. Yeah, it's 21.4. I've still got this. So all I've done is I've added these up. So I'm going to 5 plus 7.4 plus 9, 21.4, and I'm done. That is my answer. Uh, describe fully what your answer to part A represents. Uh, whenever you're working out the area under the graph, it represents the distance traveled. Um, it says... Uh, per second. Okay, because our time is measured in seconds. And part C, explain whether our answer to part A, 
they seem to love partay as much as myself and Mr. Hussain do. Uh, <laughs> explain why you're answering. Partay gives an underestimate or an overestimate for the area. You see, when we've drawn these trapeziums, we haven't really quite gone up to the line of the graph. So there is a bit of a gap there. So we haven't really calculated the area of those purple bits that I've highlighted. So this means that what we've got here is an underestimate. Okay, because of course um the trapeziums don't go all the way up to the line or don't go all the way up to the graph. Okay. Or there's a bit of area under the graph which we haven't calculated or any other words to that effect. Now we're done.